in recent times, we've had Michael Gove suggesting that we should teach the glories of empire. And then we have, you know, Jeremy Corbyn saying we should teach the crimes of empire. And I think both are not the good way forward. We need to seek to understand empire rather than just talk about our pride and our shame. We're talking about 500 years of really complicated history. A lot of very bad things happened. A lot of, okay, good things happened. And to try to summarize the whole experience as good or bad, to give it like a five-star rating of a, you know, a kettle you bought on Amazon. Sorry, as all of you as historians who write history uh, would say that, right? There's a, com there's a commitment to research and writing and communicating uh, that history, which you share. But there is, there are, there are two distinct stories, as Swapan saying, there is a story in India and there's a story in Britain. And I think Satnam's book uh, highlights the dangers of forgetting that history and the direct consequences it has in contemporary politics, in the culture wars that we see, but also people don't read or not read history because they don't like to, or they don't want to. We are talking about the curriculum of history in schools. I mean, this is these are political questions, aren't they, of how a nation's past is remembered and taught and debated uh, critically by all means from both sides. But the fact that it's completely absent from the curriculum is what is surprising and deeply worrying. Satna? Yeah, and I guess, you know, it's not just that it's absent. I mean, actually, em empire is taught a bit now. I mean, in key stage three, empire is there. But the only compulsory history on the national curriculum is the Holocaust, quite rightly. But I would say, British Empire needs to be compulsory, given it's the biggest, biggest thing we ever did. And part of the reason it's never been taught properly is that there's never been agreement. You know, in recent times, we've had Michael Gove suggesting that we should teach the glories of empire. And then we have, you know, Jeremy Corbyn saying we should teach the crimes of empire. And I think both are not the good way forward. We need to seek to understand empire rather than just talk about our pride and our shame. We're talking about 500 years of really complicated history. A lot of very bad things happened. A lot of, okay, good things happened. And to try to summarize the whole experience as good or bad, to give it like a five-star rating of a, you know, a kettle you bought on Amazon. It just doesn't, doesn't make sense. And fortunately, in recent times, all the, I guess, all the best-selling books have been about whether empire was good or bad. I'm thinking of Niall Ferguson, mainly, about a decade ago, you know, and I think looking at this complicated experience through that prism has made us very dysfunctional. It makes it impossible to teach. And the other thing is, it's not that it's not just taught. Also, the things we do teach, like, say, for example, the Tudors and World War I, World War II, we don't mention the imperial aspects to it. So there were black people around Tudor time. Queen Elizabeth I was complaining about there being too many black people in London in the 1600s. In both world wars, you know, I think six million colonial subjects in total fought for a, a nation that had colonized them. I wasn't taught that, even though I sat through about 16 Remembrance Day services and was taught World War I, World War II over three years. At no point did anyone say, by the way, you lot, your diverse student body, your ancestors were also there. So there's levels of amnesia when it comes to empire. If you've enjoyed the conversation that you just heard, do subscribe to our channel for much more.